Hello and welcome to another Horn of Africa TV news program. Me and Bitai Janai will be conducting an interview with Professor Mohammed Hassan. I want to say welcome, Professor Mohammed Hassan, to the Youth Horn of Africa TV program. And all uh, on behalf of all Horn of Africa TV and all the viewers. As we all know, Professor Mohammed Hassan is the president of Horn of Africa TV. And me and Bitai Janai are very honored to have you as our guest in this youth program. Thank you. Uh, I forgot to say good morning. I think it's a morning time in your area. Indeed. Yes. How's your morning? It's very good. It's, uh, it's nice. It's good that's, weather. That's good. Mm -hmm. um, well, before we start the questions, I'm just going to say, I know you've been traveling around um, Eritrea, Ethiopia, Kenya. Um, how was your summer? Uh, it was winter uh, in uh, in the Horn of Africa when I arrived there. It is the rainy season. Mm -hmm. uh, I I have noticed that there is a serious uh, uh, climate change in the region. Mm -hmm. in the world uh, in Ethiopia it was uh, very cold in Addis Ababa and or even uh, in the Somali area a lot of rains. Uh, I have never encountered before uh, such kind of quantity of rain, and it is also very, very cold and very dark. Uh, and when you talk to the people, they say it is the last two years there is a serious uh, uh, weather change uh, is happening. When I went to Eritrea, it is uh, uh, also a lot of rain. Uh, it's not as cold as Addis Ababa, but it is lighter. But it was raining a lot, uh, uh, which is good also. Uh, you you notice in Kenya also the same. It is raining. Uh, it was the rainy season, and it, uh, it's not cold like uh, in Ethiopia, but it is uh, it's a rainy season. You could see it and. Uh, certain weather changes also you notice over there also. That is my first thing I noticed. The second, of course, it is uh, there is uh, this corona and lockdown everywhere, and uh, mm -hmm. some of the also lockdown have been, uh, 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 the lockdown was removed. In Eritrea, lockdown is after nine, but uh, restaurants, bars, and so on, they will be closed. The rule is that you can sit uh, uh, at a restaurant or any place, only three people, not more than that. Uh, when you enter to the country also, you have to take a test uh, there uh, at the airport. Mm -hmm. And then finally, when everybody took the test and so on, then the gate of the airport will be open. You will go to uh, wherever you where uh, you go to your home or you go to the hotel and so on. In my case, I went to a hotel. If there is something of positive, then you will be informed while you are in the hotel and they come and they pick you and then they will treat you. If there is no uh, 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 if it is negative, then they will never contact you. This is one. Thing. The second, when you leave also, you have to take a, a test again. Uh, and if they notice anything in that test, they will contact you and they will come and they will take you and they will treat you. If there is nothing and it is negative, uh, they will not contact you, but you get the certificate that you are negative at the airport uh, when the day you fly. So it's in a way it is well organized. Uh, uh, and they really they are very serious about that case in Arabia. In Ethiopia, of course, also. When you enter, you have to produce a certificate of uh, COVID testing. The same in Kenya. Also. That is, uh, all countries are uh, controlling their airport uh, very seriously. Uh, they involve the Ministry of Health very seriously, whether it's in Eritrea, Ethiopia, or Kenya. That's what I noticed. Uh, the other thing which I noticed is that it is. Uh, uh, People movement also gradually starts to see it in the airport, to see it, uh, whether it is in Asmara or it is in Addis Ababa, in Kenya and so on. People movement gradually. 
starts the transform. Uh, we don't see a lot of tourists because of uh, the corona case and so on. So on. And uh, uh, in Kenya also the same uh, tourism for the time of tourism. If I went there, but it is, there is no lot of tourists because tourists kept away because of this corona. Uh, mm-hmm. and this, yeah, and it has an effect in the economy, particularly for Kenya. That's what I noticed. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you you returned safety. Um, one last question. I know you went to Eritrea on the winter um, uh, season. Have you had or have you tried Belus? <laughs> yes, I tried. It was plenty of Belus was there. It is a lot of Belus and so on. It was a Belus time, in fact. Yes, exactly. I tried it two, twice, yes. yes. Yeah. Very delicious. Mm. Lucky you. <laughs> I'm kind of jealous now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you, Professor Mohammed Hassan. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start the um, interview. So our first topic is going to be on PFDJ or EPLF and Eritrea's Eritrean um, standpoint on Horn of Africa TV, on Horn of Africa area or the region. And... Um, as we all know, a large price um, has been paid over the past 30 years. And even before that, during the uh, Eritrea's uh, liberation struggle, Eritrea has had a strong vision for stability, security, and cooperation and harmony for the people of the region. How can we describe the regional vision and goals of Eritrea? Very good. Uh, it's an excellent question. Uh, the Eritrean revolution is uh, it is three steps. It has three views. I mean, three step view. First is is to create a unity among the Eritrean people itself through the struggle. Uh, Eritrea is, is constituted of nine languages, two religions, uh, and so on. But the, through the struggle that it is all the element of the Eritrean uh, 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 people have been integrated in this struggle. So that is the beginning also, not only a struggle for independence and the right of self-determination, but also an embryo level, it is a nation building process that started there. Young people, young women, young men, and so on, from the different villages, from the different geographical zones, and so on, join struggle for the right of self determination of Eritrean people. But uh, 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 that is the ultimate goal. In the process, also, an embryo of Eritrean nation through the struggle was built. That it is people who didn't know each other before, who came from the different villages. They never met each other, young people, men and women, and so on. By joining the struggle, they started at an embryo level and a bit growing the nation building, the concept of nation building within that struggle, growing in the embryo of the struggle. That is one important thing. And this uh, uh, situation have uh, brought in a second step of understanding. Uh, the second step is that, uh, good, we are struggling for the right of self-determination of uh, uh, Eritrean people, but the, uh, uh, the right of self-determination of Eritrean people will not happen in a vacuum which is separated from the region. So uh, uh, it can only happen once the region have also a conducive situation for understanding Eritrea and at the same time for understanding the others in the region that in the future you know, this struggle at one time will 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 end you know, and it will bring the right of self determination of Eritrean people. But after that it has to continue the uh, the relationship between the people there and the government or the states there. So that also 
it shows you in the time of the struggle, the effort of the EPLF was doing to reach the different movement within Ethiopia and try to negotiate, to discuss with them, help them, train them, and so on, so on, that it is to forge, it is a future relationship of Ethiopia and Eritrea well, uh, in, 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 in the process of the struggle. And for that, you see, most of the Ethiopian movements who had been, uh, whether it is PPLA, whether it is EPRP, whether it is all other forces, that it is revolutionary democratic forces within Ethiopia, they got support and assistance from the EPLF because the EPLF vision is that it is the change must be also a regional one, an original one in order to be stable, to work together, and so and so forth. The third pillar is the relationship of the Eritrean revolution to the neighboring countries in the region. And that you see the Eritrean diplomacy, it is a relationship to Somalia, Eritrean diplomacy, it is a relationship with the people of Sudan, the, in Sudan organizing also the Eritrean uh, refugees who run away from, from the war zone and so on to try to integrate them, to work with the brothers and sisters in Sudan and so on. So it has uh, this link of of building uh, an atmosphere as also in the future that the whole of African people need to know each other. Uh, uh, majority of uh, Ethiopian people, have, they don't know or, or, or what's happening in Eritrea and they have no also a lot of contact with Eritrean people except traders or others and so on. And the movements who have emerged in Ethiopia uh, also then uh, uh, by having the contact by, uh, uh, with EPLF and so on, they start also seeing uh, different Eritrea than what uh, the different regimes was telling them through their propaganda, through their educational system and so on. So I say that it is the Eritrean revolution, it have layers in the process, but the maximum, the bigger one is also, it's a regional one, that it is once this, uh, problem is resolved, then it is the region will be pacified and the people and the state of the region, they will work together. And this is finally, you could see the relationship between the uh, EPLF at the end with, with, with uh, PPLF and then it became EPRDF, which is uh, later on resulted the overthrow of the military regime in 1991. And the also played in the stability of the country of Ethiopia, hoping that will develop uh, in Ethiopia and it will be a fraternal relationship between the people of Ethiopia and the people of the region. But unfortunately, it didn't succeed because of TPLF refusal and TPLF being a belligerent force at the end. And then we know the last 27 years what we have seen uh, uh, the havoc in the region. That is uh, the EPLF and the Eritrea Revolution concept. In that way, I understand it. Thank you, Professor. Um, unmute the mic. Uh, yes, Professor. I would like to ask you about the TPLF character. Uh, recently, as we have observed, I I think TPLF character need to be uh, described in detail. So, how do we characterize TPLF? I mean, how can we describe TPLF? In a way, uh, is there uh, a comprehensive way to describe it as a political organization? Uh, like, what kind of entity was the TPLF when it captured the state power in Ethiopia? Uh, even we can say, like, from 1991 until to 2018. So how, how, how do you describe the uh, TPLF character in, the, in this uh, span of time? First of all, uh, to understand the TPLF and the position they have taken, one little bit has to understand at least uh, 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 Ethiopia, uh, how it was emerged. It's not the... Uh, at least Ethiopia after the Italian invasion. Uh, 
because Ethiopia, before the Italian invasion, there was no road in Ethiopia. And the power uh, of the emperor, uh, it is also was contested because it was not a centralized power. The different warlords or the different uh, uh, Abyssinian uh, uh, ruling classes in the region, they had more power and the emperor was, was uh, for him was very difficult to concentrate the power in Addis Ababa. The Italian invasion brought two things. One, uh, uh, it built the road between Asmara to Addis Ababa. That is for the first time the Italian fascists were building. By building the roads, the minimum roads that exist between Asmara until Addis Ababa, and then in certain regions, uh, uh, for, for it is own occupational and for the, for the, to colonize Ethiopia and to explore Ethiopia, the Italian fascists have to build the roads. But after the defeat of the Italians and uh, left Ethiopia, and the emperor came back, these roads became the means of centralization of power to the emperor. It gave him the possibility that it is to undermine the, the uh, Abyssinian rulers in the north, to undermine them and to bring the power, centralize the power in Addis Ababa. And in the past, he had to negotiate with them. They were competing with him. But by using this road and building, of course, a modern army and so on, and bureaucracy slowly and this and this, he undermined the Abyssinian ruling classes in, in the north, he undermined them and he started centralizing the power in Addis. This, of course, it weakened the uh, Abyssinian uh, 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 ruling class, whether it is in Gondar or whether it is in Bojam, whether it is in Tigray, it, it weakened them and the power was concentrated in Addis Ababa. That is one. So the northern part, it gets more weakened, you mean that? Huh? Yes, that by, right? centra by centralization the power. And the, okay. the means of centralization of the power are, have three elements. One is uh, rebuilding the modern army, which is centralization through the army and the bureaucracy. Secondly, by opening also gradually schools uh, uh, in order to weaken the Orthodox Church, which had been the dominant ideologue of, of, of uh, uh, previous Ethiopia. So by opening and allowing private schools and state schools to be open, Ministry of Education to be established, which is a normal process to go to an absolute state, Haile uh, uh, was doing. The other is that it is before taxes, the other element was, taxes was in time. Then, and, and, and after the Italian invasion and coming back, he, uh, tax became in cash, in monetary. And by bringing this also, it centralized the power. So in this process, it weakened the Abyssinian Norse the competing feudal powers. They were weakened seriously. And then in fact, they were crushed, you could say, not militarily necessarily, but it is by administratively they were weakened. Secondly, uh, uh, after that, it is such a road was open, and uh, the introduction of certain uh, modern uh, 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 infrastructures like road and so on, and then some agriculture, some agriculture uh, developed uh, in certain area, and particularly the cash crop uh, was coming from the south, and it's no more that it is the north in economic sense. Uh, I hear echo. Yes. Uh, uh, the, the north in economic sense and specific to uh, uh, its relevance is no more important that it is uh, uh, with the roads opening to, toward the south, coffee becoming a, a very important cash crop and other things and so on. This also marginalized the nodes, and specific also to the right was marginalized. And to come now, uh, having this until 1970s and, and later on 1975, 
coming, uh, that the um, PPLF was established, that their analysis of, of what happened um, under Haile Selassie was based on a wrong analysis. They thought, yes, Tigray was marginalized uh, as all other areas, but it is marginalized, that it is the centralization of the power also uh, or had marginalized the Tigray and ruling classes who are feudal, who are and this. And the TPLF's analysis, particularly TPLF in the Tigray, Tigray student movement in the, in the university and so on, they saw, they saw it that it is a vendetta of the Amharas specifically against Tigrayans. The centralization, which is slowly, which Haile Selassie did, they saw it as it is a trick that the Amhara ruling class, particularly Shawan Amhara ruling class, they wanted uh, to make Tigrayan people poor, marginalize them, they put us in a situation that it is, uh, uh, we become beggars, our people suffer the lot and so on. All people suffer there, it's true also. But the mechanism of centralization is not only specific towards them, but specific to everybody. This is uh, uh, so the analysis there is missing. TPLF analyzed it as if it is a vendetta of the Amhara ruling class against Tigray. And uh, when they established the TPLF, they wrote their, uh, uh, this is a pity bourgeoisie from Tigray, educated uh, in the universities uh, uh, and secondary schools and so on. And they have learned also from the Eritrean revolution, which is uh, uh, their neighbors and so on. So they took an armed struggle, and the first to support them is the Eritrean Revolution uh, uh, to, to uh, train them uh, in the armed struggle, give them weapons, and this and this. But their analysis of uh, why Tigray suffered, it's a nationalist movement, we can understand, an ethno nationalist movement, which is uh, 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 the failure of the multinational parties in Ethiopia. Uh, uh, because of a lot of other factors that ethno-nationalism developed, so OLA, others, and so on. So the TPLF uh, uh, analysis from its inception, uh, it was it was not scientific to that extent. There, it's not a special target against uh, uh, Tigray people, uh, but it was uh, an absolute feudal state or a pseudo capitalist state, centralization of power because of not it is quality, but because of what the Italian fascism uh, uh, built in that country to explode that country. It was the roads and certain communication and this and this. And later on, electricity came and this and this. And most of the projects were around Addis Ababa area and so on. And uh, the cash crop, as I have told you, which is very important. For export, and Ethiopia was one of the export of copies, and this brings uh, money, and then build the army, build this. The US helped them also, and they have analyzed that centralization of power, of capital, and so on, as specific targeted toward the, the people of Cuba. Uh, capitalism developed in an uneven situation, even in, in, a, in a new, new colonial states. So, uh, Tigray was marginalized. And from this under is TPLF, their analysis started, and they said when they wrote their manifesto uh, uh, after their uh, uh, creation and so on in 1976, they say that it is the contradiction in Ethiopia and the contradiction between Tigray uh, uh, and, and, and Amhara, they say that it is Ethiopia is led by uh, an Amhara chauvinist class. And it is impossible to live with the Amhara in one country. Therefore, their conclusion is that they have to create an independent Republic of Tigray. Uh, so from the start, it was the base was very wrong. So it is became a secessionist movement. It is not a movement to change Ethiopia and rebuild a new relationship with the Ethiopian people, build a new modern state, another type one. And then if they had that uh, attitude, they could also have a regional concept. Uh, and and uh, on the contrary, we, they believed that the, the Amharas are uh, deliberately making the uh, Tigrayan people to suffer. 
and this has to be reversed. And Israel had not lived with the with uh, Sovanist Amhara, as they call it in their document, and then they demanded for secession and independence of Tigray. So that is the major program of course. But gradually, when everybody was uh, saying, you are Ethiopian, how can you, you demand the secession and so on? Then they hide, they went one year without the, a, a, a program, and then they hide it, and then after one year, they came with a proposal a new proposal, but it is not different from the uh, uh, Republic of Tigray, that they said it is they are struggling for the right of self-determination of Tigrayan people. Uh, they reversed it in that way, and they continued on that. And finally, the struggle was continuing, and most of uh, the military regime in uh, Ethiopia uh, uh, built a huge army, and most of the army was the war in Eritrea. And finally, I think it is uh, uh, that army gradually get uh, weakened and uh, getting defeated. And by 1988, at that moment, until 1988, there was no even relationship, direct relationship between the EPLF and TPLF. The relationship was cut totally because of uh, not under, uh, there was no understanding among themselves. Because the EPLF says that it is Tigray is part of Ethiopia, yes, there is a, they have a demand, a democratic demand, but secession is unacceptable. And the TPLF finally also, uh, they kept to distance themselves from the EPLF, and EPLF by 1985 uh, wrote how uh, 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 the Eritrean Revolution and uh, the democratic uh, question uh, in Ethiopia, and uh, the first response was TPLF, which has rejected that kind of discussion, it was a dialogue and debate, and then they say, let us stop our relationship, and they say we have the right to, to keep quiet. And the TPLF believed that maybe the EPLF would be strong because the dirt or the military regime had a very big armada and it can damage the Eritrean revolution. And they took a stand called wait and see. But uh, while they are waiting and seeing, things have changed in Eritrea, and the military success of the EPLF, uh, the crash of 1988 of NATO and the others, and so, and so on, this shocked them. And then they start talking in their radio, asking that they want to have again a new relationship, and finally they met in 1989 in Khartoum, and so on, and that situation on the ground, the military, the political situation was changing in a, a, a rapid way. And there was a, some relationship until 1991 with Eritrean uh, uh, people's forces by supporting them and so on. And they defeated the Turks and they took the power in 1991. And once the people took the power in 1991 and there was a chapter of transitional government, they didn't want to continue that democratically to discuss with other organizations and so on. So they wanted to grab the power alone, uh, like Haile Selassie grabbed it alone, and they continued. They attacked other organizations and so on. So all left, others have left there because it was a chapter at that moment. It was jointly drafted by the OLF and, and PTLF. They have uh, rigged that, and finally, they alone, they wrote their own constitution, they made their election in 1995, and uh, three years later, they went into war with Eritrea. That is the story, until the end of 2018. That's the end. It doesn't have a very big uh, story or a uh, uh, glorious story. It was this one. Uh, this is the first chapter of the once TPLF left Addis Ababa, TPLF, what uh, now to understand the new Ethiopia, uh, and uh, uh, Prime Minister Abiy, when he was elected in the EPRDF and so on, they didn't expect what overthrow the TPLF is the popular revolt. The popular revolt would continue from 2014 until 2018. And uh, this popular revolt was very huge in Oromia and later on. It even went into Amhara region, what they call the Kano, Ero and Kano relation. And, and finally, that the oxygen of the regime in the TPLF have uh, 
uh, reduced and overthrown. But what CPLF did in that country is very important to understand this reform process of the Prime Minister Abi. CPLF built a national army. It destroyed the previous national army and demobilized it of the military regime of Mengistu Hadamaria. And gradually, after the election 1995, they built their own army. Now, this army is not a national, it is a have a best national address. It, it, it resembles a national army, but in practice, it is a Tigrayan army. To give you an example, that uh, the major uh, major is that it is one of the ranking officers from major until down until uh, fifty percent of them there were Tigrayans in that army. Then, when you come to colonels and lieutenant colonel, sixty percent of them there were Tigrayans. Then when you see the generals, they are about 80% at the grains, which is, means it is PPLF with another dress, you could say. The remaining, some Oromo, Amara, and others, and so on, they are only symbols and they are administrative officers. They are not even battle uh, officers. So this army is one. Second, they have established a security, a security composed of 100,000 people, and 30% of the top of the security, the Tigrinya speakers. And this 100,000 security is also consumes the biggest budget of the country, more than the army and more than any other <laughs> ministries. So you could why, see- why, why they are trying to do the same uh, ethnocentric alignments in the military posts only from Tigrinya? You are trying because, to do that. Because, uh -huh. because of their fear that they are minority. And then they, they, they are afraid that it is, it will mean to put a multinational army, you have to have a multinational thinking. And you have to be, uh, uh, not, uh, you cannot base it on ethnic basis. But if you are afraid that you are a minority and then it is, they might uh, overthrow you through a coup d'etat or that, then it's better to keep the army in your own um, ethnic group. So they dominate the army. Uh, the army belong to them literally, and the army have developed internal language. It is the internal language if you are non Tigrayan and you are incorporating that army, you don't understand because it is the only speech in Tigrayan among themselves. The majority of the combatants and the fighters are there, the soldiers, the officers, and so on, all are Tigrayans. So you have a de facto or, or Tigrayan dominated army, Tigrayan dominated security. And these are the two pillars. But the most important pillar is the security also. The security is having, which is the to of our living it, it have the biggest budget of the country, bigger than the Minister of Defense and so on. So this is a minority. It's so frightened. And, 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 and of course, the majority of uh, the people who are employed to, to maintain security, they could be from all other nationalities, but the top 35% of that institution is led by Tigrayans. So uh, they dominated this. And then gradually dominated the economy, they dominated uh, everything, and they centralized it into that. So when the popular revolt came, uh, they couldn't understand what's happening there. In order if, uh, uh, to understand uh, uh, why the popular revolt came, their early warning system of understanding. Every state and every government, they have an early warning system whereby they can analyze how the population thinks, how is the feeling of the population, what is the temperature on the ground. That they could not test because majority of the security individuals who are working on the ground, they are Oromos and Maras and so and so on, this also, their parents and their brothers and sisters joined the, 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 uh, the revolt. So the center, the thinking uh, 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 of uh, the security, uh, uh, they could not understand the magnitude of this revolt, how long it will take, how to solve it, how to, uh, how to stop it if it is possible and so on, because they don't have the ground the ground there is that it is, uh, 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 this is not a revolt happening in Tigray, it is a revolt happening outside of Tigray. 
and the majority of the population where there is the revolt, they speak other language, they have another culture, and so and so on. And these people, they have to be policed, they have to know, you know from where it come, what is their grievances. They couldn't understand also that. It took them four years continuously until their demise. You could see their security also could not function because of this ethnic uh, 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 organization they have created. The top all the uh, 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 information reached them, translated from other languages to them, and then they translated it into Tigrinya, and that can, could be also a wishful thinking, a lot of information in between can disappear, and so on, and this cannot give an advice also to decision makers. So their own making, the structure they have created themselves, became against them. And they couldn't control the revolt. And the result is, become their demise. Because you cannot, as a minority ethnic group, and based on ethnic thinking, and you control the most important organs of the state, finally, if the majority revolted you, you will not have an information from the ground, and you will be isolated. The more you are isolated, eh, that is, uh, then finally you will collapse, and that's what happened to the people. Isolated. <laughs> isolated, they couldn't understand, they could not read what is on the ground, they could not read what is written in the world. And, and this is the nature of every minority state, you know, ethnic basis or tribal basis, and so on, they collapse like that, because they have no future, and they, have, they cannot also, uh, even their uh, decision makers, the, the information they get is poor because it is, they are not on the ground. They don't, they don't feel the grievances of the population. And this brought them uh, into a serious problem. And finally, without a bullet, with all the armor that they have and so on, they left. So here, when Abi was elected, Abi, he doesn't have an army. Abi doesn't have security. They are also controlling the money, banks and everything in their hand. Abi came alone as an individual. Imagine now if you come alone with the support of popular, popular revolt only. Important uh, 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 state apparatus organ of the state is no more in your hand. The army is, is in front. He has to maneuver this young man. And that is clever. I mean, I don't think I can do it wishing he was. It is very, very difficult to remove them. Even if they move out, most of the remnant is there. The army is totally there. And so on. How you will manage? How, how you will manage? So Abi, he did the, uh, one thing. It is uh, the, the former prime minister, uh, Haylamar Abdesalim, he suffered from that. He is a prime minister by name, but he is, he is controlled by security. He doesn't do anything. Uh, uh, in the morning, they open for him the office. Uh, and then uh, at five o'clock, they come to say it's, it's finished. They close it. He, the security surrounded him. To the extent that even his family, his brother, well, could not visit him. So this is the situation. But so uh, at the end, when Abi was elected, uh, Hailamaram, he said, I don't want you to be the same type of prime minister as, as me. I want an independent Ethiopian prime minister. Because he suffered for five years. And so uh, I was told how so far it is true, I don't know. That is, one time his brother came to visit him. And then once he visited him and stayed with the family, and when he left, the security stopped him and they said, next time if you come, you will break your leg. And he never show up. So this is the situation that the country is ruled under uh, uh, the, the former prime minister, Haylmar Abdesalik. So Abi, he didn't want to do not to be that. And he was advised not to do it. So he had to go step by step. So what he did is the first thing. The, one of the major controlling, I told you, there is the security belongs on them and their hand. Then they have uh, uh, the army, as I have told you, also, it is in their hand. The other also political power of them is the EPRP. This is a front, they say, but it is a fake organization. If, if, if EPRP 
I have said it in the Ethiopian television, it's like a bajaj, a, a tuk-tuk, which is this Indian, Indian small car uh, with three uh, tires that it is. The driver is a Tigrinya speaker, and the three tires uh, are uh, uh, the Amhara organization, the Oromo organization, and the Southern organization. These tires, they don't speak, they don't, they don't hear, they don't see. So it is the one who is driving that uh, bajaj, or tuk-tuk in Arabic they call it, it is a Tigrinya speaker. So it is that framework called EPRD. It is fake that, that EPRD doesn't exist. It's only TPLD who decides. Now, Abi, the first thing he did is that he destroyed EPRD. When he destroyed EPRD, TPLD died. That's why they're yeah. Yeah. That's why they ran to Tigray. There was no other option. Immediately they ran to Tigray. The second thing he did, he 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 he, he dismissed the security man, and he rearranged quickly the security of the country. Then he started working on the army. He he brought Sahara and this and this. He played among their. Uh, uh, egoist sentiment and so on, and slowly, slowly got stronger. This is internally what he did, which is a clever move he did. The second he knew. May I uh, ask, that, may I interrupt you, Professor Hassan? Is this um, just for my question because I had it in here? Is the, uh, how did the TPLF fall or turn over from its dominant um, power in Ethiopia? If you can tell us a little bit more on it. You, you kind of touched it, yeah. yeah. Disappearance of, of uh, TPLF is disappearance of EPRD. Mm -hmm. I told you, EPRD is a fake organization. When you remove it, TPLF becomes alone and cannot rule Ethiopia as a Tigrayan organization. It needed an umbrella. And that umbrella was a fake organization called EPRD, and they ruled with that name, with that logo. It's a logo. It is a logo. As the EPRD is a logo of TPLF created. It, and, and, and it have three organizations created by TPLF. They don't speak, they don't hear, they don't see. Only their servants. One is called Oromo Democratic Organization. It have a logo, Oromo logo. And there is a lot of Oromos are involved on that, but they have no decision making. There is also the Amhara organization, and there is also the Southern organization. In formula, with TPLF, they made a united front. They call it a united front of four organizations. But in reality, one organization is ruling, called the TPLF. The others, they don't hear, they don't speak, they don't decide anything. When Abi removed the EPRD, and he says, I don't want to keep that date anymore. It is a lie, it's fake. And brought his own party, Balsagana, whether good or bad, that's another issue. If they left, left. Finish. They became naked. They cannot stay. If they were clever, they could have joined him. But they cannot join because there was a lot of crime they have committed. They were foolish. If I was them, I would join them. But anyway, then they left to Tigray. And then they start destabilizing from there. And so the most of pillars that Abi he did, one is destroyed the PRD, slowly he concentrated he did that the Tigrayan intelligentsia who ruled the intelligence, huh? the intelligence is I told you hundred thousand people. And 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 those who ruled the intelligence like Getacho Asafa and other Tigrayans and so on. When EPR death was destroyed, they ran away also to Tigray. Therefore, he took the other intelligence and reorganized the intelligence. This is second. The third, the same in the army. So in this way, still the army was very difficult. In this way, Abi could consolidate. But the most important thing Abi did and understood, he had to create peace with Eritrea, and he had accepted that there was a discussion with the EPRD in the parliament and so on. He used that, and he says, I will make peace with Eritrea, and he went to Eritrea. And this also TPLF didn't expect from Adi, and they thought that it is, that will be a red line, and that it is, no Ethiopian will cross and go to Eritrea. 
Therefore, Abi, he went to Eritrea, Eritrea accepted, then President Isaias came and came so on. The relationship of peace and new relationship in the region developed. And this, uh, of course, TPLF was frightened, and it is in Tigray, and then it is started, TPLF from there, started a process of destabilization. The TPLF thought we go to our bases, and from there we will make destabilization. They have a lot of money in their hand, and this and this. Therefore, from where they send weapons, they make conferences in Tigray, and so on, to destabilize the Prime Minister Abi from Tigray. This, that was their strategy. Abi, he, he, he appeased them, he took to them, he went to them, whatever it is, they, they wanted to come back to Addis and to rule Addis again, the PPLF, and they didn't listen. The golden chance is for them if they have understood, but uh, they, they refused and they continue of the process of destabilization inside Ethiopia and to overthrow Prime Minister Abi. So the other factor which uh, the Prime Minister did, and it is a clever move, I call it, he mon the monetary, the money in the country, he, he, in which they have a lot of Ethiopian burn in their hand, the people left, and that money was also, there is a currency change happened. When the currency change happened, there is rules also you have to bring. Uh, if you wanted to change the new currency, you have to show from where if you have brought a lot of money, from where you get that money, uh, uh, are you a businesswoman, are you a businessman, did you pay the proper tax, and this and this. And this meant that it is huge amount of money which is in their hand, uh, uh, destroyed, you could say, because mm -hmm. they cannot bring it to the bank and so on. There is no evidence, tax doesn't know it, and so on. So through this, uh, four pillars that it could, Prime Minister Abi could be stable. And of course, later on, he created his own par party and then. Par in, in an area where multinational and the majority are different types of people and things so on, dominates, it melts like an ice cream like this. Follow it. This is the if you are a minority and you are democrat and you have a better vision, then you leave history to the population. Your minority is not important. You are standing for the majority to increase the life of the majority and so on and so on. The people will not see you as a minority. They see you as part of them. Probably because your minority is an advantage, they might even vote for you because you have a better ideas. You improve the life of the people, you improve the life of the women, you improve the life of the peasants, of the workers, of everybody. You bring a relativity, you bring health, you bring these schools and this and this. People like that and they want to have that. So they will say, well, these people are honest. They are not egoist. They are doing a lot of things for us. Let's vote for them. But if you use the state, uh, as a minority, and uh, and from the minority, even uh, the majority of Tigrayan people didn't benefit out of it, the very small click benefit from it, and then you lose the resources for yourself, then finally it's normal that you end up like that, and the people that it's not the first that you end up, there are a lot of other ethno-minority state has collapsed in history, therefore this became the fate of Tigrayan. So, then when they saw uh, TPLF uh, uh, took as uh, a political organization or you make friends with uh, within the people, your own people, which is the people you are leading. And to be friends with your own people, you have to do for them as citizens what they are demanding, which is, means you need to have a political economy which is different and which changes the country from a new colonial process to an independent country. Of course, when you do that, the external forces like United States and Europe, they will not like you because you are trying to change the life of the people there. And you say, we are going to use the resources here. We want to improve. We want clinics, we want hospitals, we want more schools, we want more roads, we want our people to eat three times and this, 
food security and this and this and this. This is forbidden by the external forces who are uh, giving, uh, 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 pampering TPLF and giving him oxygen. So the TPLF chose to be an agent. It's a choice. It is a choice to be an agent of external forces. When you become an agent in the region of external force, they will shower you, they will, uh, will uh, give you money and so on, a program and cover and so on, because uh, you are in service of them and you are not in service of your own people. And that uh, TPLF deliberately chose to be not in service of its own people, even the people of Tigray didn't benefit from TPLF in power. Maybe two, three, four hundred fat cats who have made money and kept and so on. But the majority of Tigrayan people also is suffering like others. So they chose to be an agent. And if you become and you make a such kind of choice, then you will be also an agent to disturb the region. Because the region, the forces very far away from this region, they want to control it. And you will be in that service. Who's really encouraging them to do all this stuff? Who's really behind all this? I know you've been saying that you they are the agent. So who's really behind all this you, stuff? Uni United States and European Union. Mm. These are imperialist forces. The imperialist forces, they see the region must be under their control. And to control it, they will not come directly and put a government of their own government. They need an agent from inside to control for them on their behalf. And then that agent will be supported, will be given money, will be given this and so forth. So it is the United States and Europe which supported TPLF because TPLF chose to be their agent. That's why they waged war uh, against Saratea. That's why when they faced their back, they went into Somalia and so on. It's not to raise people's interest or to people interest to wage this war. It is a war with a uh, uh, their agent uh, uh, and, and, and they tell them do this, they do because they are paid by them, supported diplomatically by them, economically supported by them, they give them weapons, their media showers them as if they are very nice people, they invite them in G20 and so on and so on. So uh, it is always is like that. Uh, I give you an, uh, an, an one example in the history of African continent. Uh, you know, we see now a lot of black people live in uh, UK, United States, uh, and uh, certain Latin American countries and so on, and, and Brazil and all. This is developed through the slave trade. Uh, when the Portuguese came to collect African slaves, Portuguese, they were very, very short people. They are not even meter uh, and twenty. After that, they were very good, strong, physically very, very strong. When the Portuguese reached new, now, which is called now Angola, uh, that area, uh, because it is when they came over there, they made a contact with, with a tribal chief of, uh, of Angola. And they brought for him uh, alcohol, because that type uh, doesn't produce alcohol, mirrors, and so and so on. He was fascinated, the man, and they gave him and made a relationship with him. And then finally, of course, uh, that uh, chief of the tribal chief, he had also his internal war with other tribes. So when they asked him, we need people, young people, men and women, he was invading his neighboring clan and neighboring tribe and takes all the young people and gives it to the Portuguese. And the Portuguese ships them. First they settle in, in, in Cabert and then from there they ship them. And finally Portugal satisfied with, with the relationship with this man. And uh, they invited him to Spain. When he came to Spain, they baptized him, they gave him a new name. They called him King Alpento. King Alpento is the, in African slave trade history, it is a person. Uh, one to read and to understand uh, this, I will stop here.
advise that any young man and young woman to read, to understand our relationship with Europe, how it started. And uh, it is here, Thomas, this man, the slave trade, it's a wonderful. Yeah, I can and see it. Yes, he explains in detail how it developed. It's not out of the sky. You need always an internal collaborator. Now, of course, they don't need the slaves, but they need resources. They need the geographical basis to station their army and so on and so on. And people Ethiopia is a very big country, huge population, a strategically located area, and so on. So PPLF became like modern King Alfonso. There is no difference between King Alfonso and TPLF. TPLF, the difference is TPLF, they wear suits, they have uh, ties, they come invited to G20, and so on. Obama likes them, uh, uh, Clinton likes them, uh, Biden likes them, and so on. They have friends there which they themselves give their money and so on. And this kind of agents everywhere in service of external forces. And that was at the end with popular revolt, it left to support. Went to Tigray and then waged the war from Tigray. Mm -hmm. war. One uh, wants to a war against Eritrea. They believed, as I have told you, that most of these officers, generals, and so on, one by one, they left to the Tigray. So they knew that it is the federal government in Ethiopia have no army. They are the one. Secondary, 80% armament of the Ethiopian army is stationed in Tigray. The most important uh, army of Ethiopia they consider is stationed in Tigray. So on the 3rd of November, they attacked that army, they took the weapon, they killed what they killed, and the war started like that. And then they were defeated. And now the situation for the people of Tigray also is very bad. Uh, they made now offensive to Amhara area. They were chased also. I think they cannot survive. They will exhaust their forces at the end. And then you see imperialist diplomacy, United States and so on, shuttling in the region, trying to convince the Sudanese to say to give them a corridor because 30,000 of them run away and they are in refugee camps and so on to bring them back, to bring weapons for them. Until now, they didn't succeed. The situation continues like that. I think the demise of TPLA as, an, as a, a, a cancer in the region will be very soon. This is the situation and the history of TPLA. Um, I just want to ask you um, one question, Professor Mohammed Hassan. Um, we know we we were in a war with them in 1998, which lasted in 2000, and then we lost a lot of lives. When they started this war that happened in November, did they really think they would win, or they just started the war because they don't want to be caught? What was their idea, do you think? Their idea is uh, they in engineered the war themselves. Mm -hmm. They really believe that, that it is, uh, uh, they will win the war. Because their masters also, they say, you will win the war. The war have uh, uh, three components in their understanding. Uh, one is the nightmare for them is uh, independent Eritrea being there. Mm -hmm. And this independent territory irritates external forces which subsidize TPLF and irritates subsidize, uh, uh, also TPLF. So in TPLF thinking, if we defeat Shabia, that is what they say, their, their objective is to go until Admara, overthrow the government, and then put a puppet government. This is like a film, this is a scenario. That they but they, do, they didn't put the, the history of Eritrean resistance. That is, it. the imperialists themselves, they always negate the history and the resilience of the people of whom they attack. Because you have to undermine that. You have to say, I am stronger than them. We can defeat them. You cannot tell to your soldiers, 
you will not defeat them. Then no soldier will, 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 will fight for you. So you have to build it in a moral, you can defeat them, they are weak, they are this, and so on. And, and you have to create a false consciousness. Mm-hmm. So the thing is, uh, it became uh, uh, a nightmare for, for them. It's also a nightmare for them that this independent little Eritrea is standing in her. And, and this independent little Eritrea, it refused their masters because we have a master. Uh, uh, like the house nigger, one uh, says that when the master is sick, he says we are sick. So it is the people left worried that independent vision of Eritrea uh, and, the, uh, and, and so on. Their masters also they didn't like it. The one who supporting people So they used people And when they say, you have to wage war in the name of border, whatever it is, they have to create friction. And then they wage the war. When they wage the war, uh, uh, they didn't put the concentration of the Eritrean people resistance and history. We are speaking now of years, Eritrean resistance and, and, and for independence and so on. They don't consider that. That is, we consider that. But the, 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 the invading force doesn't uh, 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 consider that in his historical perspective. And you have seen that now what happened the debacle of Americans in Afghanistan. They don't consider the history of Afghani people. They hmm? Because we are not people for them, because they have the biggest armada, the bombing, the machines, and so on. So, so they depend on that. So they forgot Kuwait, they forgot Vietnam, they forgot this, what, the, and so on. So they say, little Eritrea, we can isolate, we can do this, and so on, and, so on, and we can destroy. It. Didn't succeed. Uh, yes, Professor, as you have uh, described it, uh, the TPLF from the very inception, uh, they don't have any crystallized idea or a vision for the vast population of Ethiopia. And uh, the, as you said also, uh, TPLF are using EPRDF as an umbrella to mislead the Ethiopian people as if they prevent the people of Ethiopia to just uh, facilitate their uh, 27 years of uh, tyrannical misrule in Ethiopia. But uh, I will see it from the other angle perspective from the uh, Tigray side. Uh, the TPLF is to claim uh, as to present their service as the only and uh, only representative of the people of Tigray. At the same time, and the TPLF and the people of Tigray are indivis- indivisible, they claim. Uh, is this true? And if not, how can it be explained? Have the people of Tigray been beneficiaries from the uh, hegemonic role of TPLF? Uh, who have been benefited from the TPLF uh, tyrannical role in the past uh, 27 years and more? Good. In normal circumstances, a ruling class who says that loves its own people and it represents the people of Tigray in a very democratic, honest and decent way. The first thing he will wish peace for the people of Tigray. That is the minimum democratic understanding of a movement or an organization. Second, an organization who thinks and has a sentiment of the people of Tigray would like to have a peaceful and cordial relation with his neighbors in order to develop. You don't develop in vacuum. You develop with your neighbors. Third, if they are very serious and they really represent the people of Tigray. They will not say that it is the Amhara people is our enemy, which is their best neighbor. If I now I stand up and wake up in the morning and I say all my neighbors are my enemy, the Belgian will say you are a sick man. You have to go to psychiatry. If you view everybody around you is your enemy, 
you have no possibility to give up. So I don't represent, it doesn't represent the people of Tigray from, from this vision, I conclude. Second, the people they live around you will always live there. There is no geographical change happening. Eritrea will be there, the other Ethiopians will be there. Why you antagonize them and you create a sex historical antagonism between the people of Tigray and Eritrea? Because the enemy or the friend of you from very far, 30,000 kilometers, it will not protect you the day you come into a serious problem. You must have a psychological problem when you chase 82,000 Eritreans, Eritreans, original Eritreans and Ethiopians of Eritrean origin. You take all their property from them and you chase them with a pyjama. With, for whom you are doing this? And take their property. You might, might some Tigrayans and some others uh, 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 crook, they might take the property, but this didn't help the people of Tigray. So by doing like this, you are waging a war against the people of Tigray. Your major enemy, number one, is the people of Tigray. If I'm a Tigrayan, you are not doing good for me. The people of Tigray is not created in a factory of city and there. They have always lived there and they will live also in the future there. How TPLF? TPLF doesn't represent the people of Tigray. It's a segment of an organization. And this organization, when it's creating such kind of enmity around the people of Tigray, this is an organization is not even able, able, is not even concerned for a simple drinking water in Makale. They don't have drinking water in Makale. Big part of Tigray, Tambayn, and other places, marginalized areas. There is nothing there, except very few individuals became wealthy after this. Therefore, for me, TPLF doesn't represent of Tigray people. The difference is, it TPLF inculcated false consciousness. And that false consciousness, until it fades away from the people of Tigray, and there will be a democratic, revolutionary, other Tigrayan movement emerges, that false consciousness will remain for a while. And, and that false consciousness also is hurting the people of Tigray. Therefore, from an all angle, the biggest loser in this game is the people of Tigray. That's why I appeal to Ethiopians and to all others to understand from the framework, the people of Tigray is not our enemy. They are our brothers and sisters. And we have to think from that term and from that framework that it is. The people of Tigray must be liberated again from this agent ethno-fascist group, TPLA. They don't represent the people of Tigray. Now they use the people of Tigray, Jews, women, and so on, for them to fight. Sad Khan, Sad General Sad Khan had a a beer factory, he's a wealthy man, he looted. And now he's the one who's uh, 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 leading, leading the, uh, uh, the military thing. What he is saying is, give me your children, I'm fighting in order to, be, to get more rich. That is not more than that. He's trying to defend the property he has in Ethiopia huh? by fighting, by using ordinary peasant children of, uh, of Tigray, children eh, of Tigray, for him to fight as mercenary. Unfortunate, there is no strong democratic movement within Tigray, and that to develop and to raise and to eradicate this false consciousness. But there are people, and one day it will come. I believe that it will come. Uh, uh, they will not perish like that, and they will not remain for very long time under this uh, 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 ethno fascist elements who are bringing continuous suffering for the people of Tigray.
similar to this, I would like to ask uh, this uh, cryptocratic ethno-fascist uh, organization, uh, TPLF. Now it is vivid to the people in the Horon or in the globe that uh, it is a reactionary and Western mercenary in the Horn of Africa. So how do you gauge the political thermometer in the Horn and the perception of the people or the IGAR or the African Union uh, with regard to the PLF? How they are just understanding of the PLF? Do you think uh, enough uh, enlightenment have been uh, done to aware or to understand the TPLF conspiracy and all things. What's your idea on this, if we... Uh... First of all, IGAD have no any influence. It is subsidized by external forces. If IGAD says this is wrong, then the money will stop. The pipeline will be closed. So I don't, I don't consider IGAD is important. Neither the African Union for that matter. The most important is to raise the consciousness of Ethiopian people, that it is the struggle is a democratic struggle, and in that struggle, the people of Tigray also have a place. That we have to appeal to the people of Tigray, work with the people of Tigray. People of Tigray are Ethiopians, and it is, they didn't vote for that. They didn't vote for this conflict. They didn't vote. That is not. It is a very a tiny organization who have military capacity and so on, force the people of Tigray to use it. So we have to raise the consciousness of all the Ethiopian people. At the same time also, we have to raise uh, and, and discuss with our brothers and sisters Tigrayan that they have to be in the front line. Only Tigrayans can solve the problem of Tigray. Me as a Somali or an Amhara or I'm saying to so we can support uh, we don't want this conflict to, to be people to people conflict. But the democratic forces, the revolutionary forces within Tigray, they have to do their homework also. They have to stand in the front line against this ethno fascist TPLF, which doesn't represent the people of uh, uh, Tigray. And this will come, the history will push it and bring it. As I have explained in the beginning, majority of the Ethiopian people, they don't want TPLF. So if majority of Ethiopian people, they don't want to eat, uh, PPLF, then what is the, people, the choice of the people of Tigray? Only to struggle against PPLF. So we will encourage them that it is, they should not remain marginalized and so on and so on. So it is uh, 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 up to them. It is the ball is now in the hand of, uh, 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 of the people of Tigray. Here you need that the people of Tigray need a revolutionary democratic uh, movement who are able to sacrifice themselves even against the TPLF and the great Tigray and then build with all other Ethiopians together a new Ethiopia in whatever form. They are, they are just victims and they will only suffer. TPLF is no more, is that no more, never represent and no more represent the people of Tigray. TPLF is fighting for itself and for external forces who wanted to destabilize the region. This consciousness must be raised among the Tigrayans. And we have to be very dialectical, we have to be very careful that we don't harm also their sentiment. Tigrayan people, they are people like us, and their sentiment must be respected. They are also victims. They are losing their children everywhere. The mothers and the parents and so on who are suffering, and they are in agony and so on. So we have to be very careful for those non-Tigrayan speakers. We have to be very, very careful when we deal with the people of Tigray because we have to be very dialectical and we have to be very honest and straightforward. And then give our hand to them, even if it's possible, we can struggle with them to remove this parasite from Tigray. That is my opinion. Thank you, Professor. Um, my next um, question is going to be um, focusing on the regional uh, solidarity between Eritrea and Ethiopia. Um, how would you describe Eritrea's uh, reaction to ensure security after this recent conflict um, that TPLF um, ignited? 
And also, what was Eritrea's contribution in this regard? Uh, we know Abiy Ahmed, uh, Dr. Abiy Ahmed said, a friend in critical time of need uh, uh, about Eritrea. What did he really mean when he says a friend in critical time of need? Very good. Uh, as I have earlier mentioned, the Eritrean revolution had three pillars, I told you. And one of the pillars is a regional one. That it is Eritrea is not an island alone can be. And it is the achievement of Eritrea revolution in concrete could be Eritrean independence. In general, the concept is that peace and tranquility in the whole of Africa. That it is the people and the state of all of Africa, if they work together without any contradiction and so on, the region can grow and the people of the region can, can live a better life. This is the vision. So when you have this vision, that it is, and, and you have an enemy which is destroying both visions, the sovereignty of Eritrea, at the same time, this cooperation in the region, by being an agent of external force, you will be obliged to bring uh, and to apply your vision uh, uh, that it is these elements must be eliminated and removed. That's what he means, Abi, also. Of course, it is as I have mentioned for you, the, his, the, the army and everything and so on belongs to them. Without a Eritrean support to the Ethiopian Federal Army, it could have been very difficult to remove and to reduce the fighting capacity of Ethiopia. That's what he means. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the people of Eritrea and the government, they stood with us uh, uh, shoulder to shoulder in a bad time. That is true. And this is also the feeling of all Ethiopian people. This is one. From a Eritrean perspective, when it is explained, it is not from a vision and uh, the enemy of my enemy uh, of my enemy is my brother. No, that is not. That is that's an opportunistic stance. Mm -hmm. From a Eritrean revolution point of view, it's not, it's not an opportunistic stance. It is a stand of a vision that it is the parasite must be removed. They uh, to give you one example, to the President Isaiah have uh, explained it to the leadership of TPLA when Deborah's own came in Omaha. He told him that we know you are preparing for a war yeah. through our intelligence and so on. But this is not good for you people. Mm -hmm. Come to the table. Don't go this way. This is an advice if the other man have understood. So there is no uh, uh, vendetta to look at it or to grant or whatever it is and so on. That's not. But Eritrea's vision is that the region must be peace. Let us alone. Let us we work our contradiction. And then we can build our economic, social, political, psychological relations with all the people in the region because the people of the region are, are brothers and sisters. Uh, they live for centuries there. We can and so on. It's the external force who doesn't want us to come together, creates always boundaries among us, war among us, and so on. That is why I say the new Horn of Africa, it is part of the Eritrea revolution. It is. When you change, and the change comes with the same vision in Addis Ababa, Mogadishu, Asmara, and so on, whatever it is, this vision, eh, it is the vision of the future, that it is our youth, they can work together, they can travel, investors can go everywhere, invest, and so on, to ignite the economy and social, and this, and this, and this. Therefore, uh, uh, it had always been, now 60 years of struggle, and then it had always been that it is the struggle of uh, Eritrean people is not only for Eritrea, as I have mentioned to you, it's also to bring a new paternal relationship in the region. And that's why that we will always campaign for, <coughs> for the new Horn of Africa. And this whole new Horn of Africa it will be democratic, it will be based on uh, uh, paternal relation among the people. Uh, we have lost a lot of time. The, the enemy has put a stone in our shoe that we cannot walk. But it is now is the shoe is at least is proper we can walk and we have to remove the obstacle there. And then we can continue our relationship stronger and stronger. That's what he means, uh, Dr. Abiy. And he was right that the return 
support means qualitatively it changes the balance of forces in the country. Mm. That is good. Thank you, Professor. Uh, to continue with the regional solidarity. Uh, after the popular uprising, the coming to power of the new uh, reformist government led by Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed in 2018. Uh, he had created a great hope in our region. So looking back at the past three years, how do we assess the promises of the new reformist leadership in Ethiopia besides the current realities on the ground? Very good. First of all, uh, 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 three important elements that it is the change in Ethiopia brought a change. One is there is no war between Eritrea and Ethiopia. On the contrary, when the PPLF killed and humiliated the Ethiopian army at the border in Badimna, the Ethiopian officers and the soldiers, they ran away to Eritrea. And they were fed by Eritrean people and dressed by Eritrean people. And then came back by Ethiopia. This shows you that there is no an antagonistic relationship between Ethiopian people and Eritrean people. That is dead already. Second, TPLF was destabilizing Somalia. When TPLF is in power, was sending small and big weapons to the different forces in Somalia that Somalia could not have any peace among themselves. Since Prime Minister Abiy, a bullet was not sent to Somalia. There is no intervention on Somali issues. That is why now Somalia, we don't hear a lot of conflict among Somali. That's also a positive change. Third, for the first time in Ethiopia, people start talking, what is TPLF and what is TPLF is doing? Every day the crimes of TPLF are revealed. And more and more Ethiopian people start understanding the crimes committed by the TPLF more and more. And this had brought also the unity of Ethiopian people against TPLF. This is also a good one step ahead. In a sense, that it is, the three variables we are talking about, which is we call the new horn of Africa, is emerging and growing within these three variables. Therefore, uh, uh, it's a big thing in a political, historical, psychological, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, the other people left made a lot of campaign of hate against Eritrea and Eritrean people. But now when you go to Ethiopia, there are plenty of Eritreans and nobody is, uh, no Ethiopian people, uh, and, uh, individual and so on, sees any antagonism uh, against Eritreans. So it became normal. It, it turned. So the, 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 the idea to inculcate very bad feeling among these two people, it evaporated. So the enemy didn't succeed. They are trying to inject a virus among the people that the people they can hate each other and so and so on, and that disappeared. Within Ethiopia also it disappeared, a big part of it. And people now start seeing things differently and rationally, and they judge you because of your political position. They don't judge you because of your ethnic or because of your religion or whatever it is. You will be judged from what you say and what you do. So I find it is a good position, a new consciousness developed, a new historical development is going on. It is hope giving according, I talk to a lot of people from different areas and so on and so on. They are happy now. They feel happy. You could see people are not nervous. They are not depressed and so on and so on. They see, for the, uh, they, uh, they see things better. They hope that the future will be much better. So people are relaxed. It's not uh, as before. So in that sense, it's a big thing. Yes. 
Um, thank you, Professor. Uh, well, I think that's going to be kind of our last question, but it's going to be related to the cooperation or and stability in the region. Um, the people of the region have ushered in a new era as a result of their collective struggle. What type of um, consciousness created this struggle for an independent, independent political for their dignity? And what do you think how will it do you think it will continue or do you think it will be reversed and or are there any other other opinion options or alternatives besides being master of their own destiny first of all i think impossible to reverse it impossible in brackets uh, to reverse that, the power of reaction must be very strong in military, in politics, and psychologically. The power of reaction in our region now is literally defeated, psychologically defeated, politically defeated, and even propaganda-wise defeated. It doesn't have any mass base among the population. That is why the biggest power intervention now, taking the, the case to security council, taking there, sending a special envoy, and so on, and so on, understood that it is, the ground has changed totally out of them. They have no control on it. And the region basically have changed. And the, when I say basically the region changed, the mentality and the psychology of the people in the region have changed. Nobody can reverse. In order to reverse, you need three elements in the region. One, there must be inter-ethnic head to the level that it is that it is easily the external force can arm one group. That is not there now. The second is that it is uh, the paternal relationship among the people must be ridiculed and reduced to zero. That's not possible now. The paternal relationship among the people and the state increased by every time the pressure of the external force and their agents, what they are doing. It becomes clear, like, like you see in the film, it becomes clear that who is. The third is the consciousness of Ethiopian people. Whether it is in diaspora or inside the country is increasing in a very fast stretch. Is increasing, they have understood that the external force in fact wants the misery of Ethiopian people to continue. And these robbers and these agents of, of them have to come back to power. So mm -hmm. it is those agents and those elements who are pushing to this. Now Ethiopians in America and diaspora and so on. So, they have seen the real face of the enemy, the mass force, by supporting TPLA. They themselves are foolish, I say, even if they have a strategic or other interest in the region, to push to the extent that it is their mass to fall in front of the, the, the people. This is a foolishness of their diplomacy and the way they are reasoning. The other element, very important element, and maybe it has gave a boost to the whole people of the region, what happened in Afghanistan. Exactly, yeah. The, the whole NATO had collapsed like ice cream. Now they say they have even, uh, uh, I'm not supporting the Taliban who have uh, uh, archaic ideology, but the, idea, the thinking, the, the steadfastness of the Afghani people who refuses to be occupied, eh? they have the same psychology as us. So uh, uh, our masses outside, they are learning from all these experiences. And I do believe that it is uh, gradually the, the, our relationship, which is now strong, and it will be super strong and super strong, super strong. And... Uh, what worries me is, um, especially for me as a young, um, 
the people of Tigray, are, I feel like they're not kind of like thinking or they're not like they don't know what who TPLF is. And I see them every time when they post. I don't know if it is true or if it is fake. They get stronger and stronger to work with TPLF. I don't know if it is on my side or is it on everyone's side. And I feel like when it's turned to civil war, and I think that's kind of what the question was kind of asking, would it be reverse? Would I be kind of like think something else? I don't know. Because the, because of the people, not TPLF, just because of the people, to save them kind of thing, yeah. You know, the people, the people that are receiving only one diet. Mm -hmm. And this generation, who are 70% of the population of Tigray, they grow up only with one diet. There was no... Uh, uh, if they grow up only with pizza, they have never seen rice. They have never seen also uh, uh, other type of foods. Mm -hmm. So it's, they were inculcated, inculcated, and inculcated, and inculcated. The same like the Germans inculcated by the Nazis. The German people changed it. Once the TPLF defeats militarily, and it will be defeated militarily, then the people of Tigray will have an openness to breathe. They are controlled by way of TPLF organization, TPLF security, TPLF space, divide them by regions and so on, in Greek and in this. So these poor people, as we are all poor, that it is, they never had a chance to listen to the others. Consciousness comes only through learning. It doesn't come because you are Tigrayan or non tigrayan And that learning process, it was closed in Tigray for a very long time. And now also even more closed. But of course, history, as it teach us, there will be Tigrayans. They are already against who develop a vision now because of uh, this collective madness of TPLF and its group. It is, it has no mass basis. Majority of civilian people, they don't support them. But they are afraid also to come in the street. They can, they can arrest them, they can kill them, and, so, and they did also when they entered to Makale, they killed a lot of people. Therefore, civilians, uh, yes, a lot of civilians, a lot of civilians killed, a lot of civilians suffered. Under TPLF, a lot of civilians have been eliminated, jailed, uh, and so on. So on. So to grant, uh, anything if you if you if you refuse, uh, yes. Uh, how many uh, grand fighters uh, they are begging in Addis Ababa and so on uh, and thrown like a like a dirt in the street? But me, as if, uh, if you ask me, I have a very big hope on the people of Tigray because they are people. Mm -hmm. They were not created by machine. They are people like you and me. And there will be thinkers, and there will be fighters, and there will be people who can rise up. At one time, when President Isaias was asked, uh, when the war started, I think, in uh, 98 or 99, he said, I'm very sad for the people of Tigray. Yeah. He's yeah. right. He's right. He's sad, I'm sad. The people of Tigray now have no leadership which represents the people of Tigray, except this minority fascist fans. And... Uh, the people of Tigray will rise up. They are not created by anybody. They are not created by TPLF, or TPLF didn't produce them uh, uh, like Kalwa uh, 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 produced by TPLF Tigray people. No, Tigray people have long history. They have always been there, and they will remain. And we have to uh, uh, help if it is to be helped. Our propaganda system must be very justice-wise, that it is uh, when Tigrayan listen to our propaganda, he must feel that it is Muhammad is my brother. Muhammad and me, we can fight together. Also, I'm his brother, and, and, and he is my brother, and she is my sister, and so on. But this we have to tell it every day, to, uh, wherever circle we are. They are our brothers. Without them also, the home of Africa, we, 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 we cannot be. 
the enemy will penetrate and will create uh, and steal the mind of one of our brother and create a trouble. So mm-hmm. we in the whole of Africa television, we really believe and we want them even to come and to make an, an interview here with us. Even if they have another idea, I don't mind. They can come to the television of Horn of Africa. They can make their own vision. Let them, if they have grievances, they can say. We can debate with them. That is it, the beginning. If we don't know each other, we don't see each other, we don't see each other, it's very difficult to root each other. I really appeal that it is progressive, democratic grants who have a story to tell. The Horn of Africa television invites them. Come, this is your television. You are part of Horn of Africa. Yeah. So we want them. Wherever they are, they must be invited. Let them, if even they have grievances, even if they will say that we don't, things we don't like it, huh? let them come, let them say and debate with them and teach each other. Teaching is when you, a dialogue between two. Huh? Uh, teaching is not a monologue thing. It is, if I talk only to myself, I have no meaning, uh, and so on. So they are welcome, we invite them, and I really appeal to them. Uh, they can write us. We can even invite them, let them come. Let, let them have 180 degree different ideas against us. We want them, and we want to see how they reason. Let them come. Let the public judge at the end by watching uh, the role of Thank you, Professor. Uh, yes, <clears throat> uh, we are very hopeful uh, about the Horn of Africa bright future after the complete eradication of the ethnofascist reactionary uh, Western mercenary TPLF organization. So here I quote you, Professor Mohammed Hassan. You were here saying in uh, other medias. I just checked it out in the YouTube. You are here saying the new Horn of Africa. So uh, what, what does imply, imply that by say new Horn of Africa? Are we expecting new geographical reconfiguration in the Horn with a new map or <laughs> it's about the new ideology about the regional solidarity, integrity in economy, in politics or, or in confederation, whatever. What, 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 is that, what, what do you mean by that by saying the uh, new Horn of Africa? New Horn of Africa is the antithesis of the old Horn of Africa. The new Horn of Africa is is totally 180 degrees different from what we have seen the last 60 years, old Horn of Africa. The old Horn of Africa is a place of war, misery, external intervention, and so on and so on. And all this is the cause of it is external intervention. It's not the people. If we reverse the old whole of Africa, remove this consciousness, bring the states and the people together, it becomes new whole of Africa. That's it. There is nothing, it's not a Einstein uh, 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 mathematics or physics. It is simple. Rem- remove the external forces. We are not against uh, to deal with other people. If we, our consciousness removes that, and that learn from our experience of 60 years and even 80 years, this intervention every time bringing disaster to us. If our consciousness is very high and we understood all of us, this is a taboo and should not happen. Then the new Oron of Africa is born our consciousness is there. That's it. There is nothing a new magic in it. And this new one of Africa will be peaceful with itself. Peaceful with itself means people will trade, will go, will meet each other, will discuss among themselves, will intermarry young people, and so on. The future of the people of the Horn of Africa, and particularly the future of the young people of the Horn of Africa will be brighter. That's what is the vision of Horn of Africa. It's not a, a, a magic. And thank you. Well, um, I think that was it for today. Um, I really want to say thank you on behalf of all 
Horn of Africa TV and all the US members. Um, we are so honored to have you for this interview. And I hope uh, we'll have this kind of discussion on the next time. And uh, thank you from me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, Professor Mohammed Hassan. We would like to thank you too for giving us uh, time on speaking with us on this Horn Africa TV program for the use basically, and uh, sharing your enlightening insights and detailed political analysis about the current situation in the Horn, specifically about Russia and Ethiopia. We appreciate it and we thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Hamadassan, again. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Have, have a good week.